a who's who of Australian and international politics, paid their respects at the state memorial service of former Prime Minister Gough Whitlam. In a room full of the Labor Party faithful, some guests were more popular than others. The service underway It was time to thank Gough for laying the foundations for a modern Australia. The optimism and energy which he represented, which he embodied, were and remain emblematic of a vision of Australia as an independent, confident, outward-looking, generous nation. He was a great Australian Prime Minister, great in every sense of the word. In less than three years, an astonishing reform agenda leapt off the policy platform and into legislation and the machinery and programs of government. His policies even credited with producing a Hollywood export. I am the beneficiary of free tertiary education. He introduced free health care, paid maternity leave for public servants and was a champion of reconciliation and Aboriginal land rights. When he breathed, he truly was Australia's greatest white elder and friend without peer of the original Australians. Kev Carmody and Paul Kelly performing their famous land rights anthem. From little things, big things grow. From little things, big things grow. Gough Whitlam was a man of the people, never more so than when campaigning with his son. My favourite boyhood memory of election campaigning with my father is of, him, is of him trawling for votes, armed with a loudspeaker, not being driven along streets in a flatbed truck or a van, but motoring along the Warrenora River in a tinny. And while the 1975 dismissal was barely mentioned, the great leader's failings weren't completely forgotten. Yes, there were mistakes. Uh, Gough never pretended to perfection or to sainthood, well, well hardly ever, <laughs> although when he set off the metal detector at airport security, he would blame his aura. No politician is universally loved. We all know that. But for this day at least, Gough Whitlam came close.